Hey, and welcome to the third edition of Five Cool Things on YouTube. It's also the third week of a lockdown in the UK because of the coronavirus crisis. So again, it's the third week that I'm doing this at home alone. Now, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference to the content. This week, as promised, we've got a lineup of knee pads, another trail lid, and some additional clothing. The last two weeks have mostly been about those trail helmets. So if you're looking for a new half or full face with removable chin bar, then check out our videos from the previous two weeks over on YouTube. These knee pads, as well as the mountain bike helmets from last week, are going into a roundup. So once they're tested, if those products score over four stars out of five, then they'll go into our best of guide, which helps you guys pick out the best bits of kit when you're next in the market for purchasing one of those things. This week, the knee pads have come from Alpine Stars and O'Neill. And actually in the next couple of weeks, we've got stuff coming up from Endura, Bliss and Layette. The helmet we've got is an iXS trigger, and then we've got some extra kit from O'Neill as well. So let's get started with our Alpine Stars knee pads. These first knee pads are one of the lighter variety. So this is the Alpine Stars Paragon Plus knee pad. It's 45 quid, and it's one of those sort of skinny, slim down, one piece knee pad. No extra fasteners or fixtures, it's just a sleeve. It gets silicon at the top, and at the bottom and it gets an extra grip around the calf too. So this is, feels pretty bendy, it's pretty lightweight and actually they look pretty slim with a nice long cuff at the top so hopefully you won't get any of that nasty thigh gap between your shorts and the knee pad. At 45 quid they're not too bad a price and actually I'm quite intrigued to see how these measure up. Now I've been riding in the Fox Launch Enduro knee pads and um, the ones that are fairly new and really similar to this. Now I bought those knee pads rather than have them on test and they haven't lasted. I've put them through the wash and it seems like my washing machine has sort of burnt the outside, it's left holes down the side and also stitching on those Fox knee pads has come apart at the seams just through general wear and tear. So it'll be really interesting to see if these are a viable option. Also up from Alpine Stars are the Alpine Stars Vector Pro knee pads. So these are more downhill orientated knee pad. They're a lot chunkier. They get two Velcro straps, top and bottom. It's not that sort of one piece sleeve. It's got, bit, got a hole in the back. And then there's this flexible knee pad, which is a lot thicker and actually looks like it goes wider around the sides of the knees. These come in at 75 quid and it'll be interesting to see how they pedal compared to the little skinny Paragon Plus ones there. These might offer more protection, but that might come at a cost as they're a bit hotter to pedal in, but we'll have to wait and see. Next up from O'Neill, another lightweight pad. These are the O'Neill Superfly, which are kind of, look kind of square, um, but they're knitted, got a thin little skinny pad, sort of similar weight to those Alpine Stars ones. Now O'Neill say that this is their IPX foam, which is supposed to do the same as D3O, so harden on impact. They use that on those and the Redeemer knee pads that I'm about to show you. They also say there should be silicon around the top and bottom, which I can't see. Um, there's nothing in there at all. Um, so I have to get back to the brand and see if that's a mistake or whether that's how these knee pads come. But other than that, they're quite a short knee pad. There's no tall cuff, so you might see a bit of thigh between your shorts and the knee pad. Pretty simple, 40 quid, so they're not expensive. So those Redeemer knee pads are kind of on the same length as the Alpine Star Vector Pro. A much bigger, oh, that's upside down. <laughs> a much bigger, burlier knee pad. There's a Velcro strap at the top, and these interestingly come with a zipper, so you can take them on and off without taking your shoes on and off. The zipper gets an inside um, layer, I suppose you'd call that, to stop the zipper pinch in your leg when you do it up. And also it's got a little hood at the top. So hopefully that zipper won't dig into the back of your leg when you're pedaling. These have got various sorts of mesh where there's not the padding to try and keep you cool. And those are 75 quid, so not a bad price too. It uses the same IPX foam, so that's the same as that D3O, it's supposed to harden on impact, but once you're pedaling and otherwise be soft and malleable. Another word on those knee pads, if you wanna really geek out about knee pad tech, here it is. So there's two different levels of ratings that we've got here. They're motorcycle ratings, they come with a C stamp, and it's level one and level two. The Alpine Stars Paragon Plus, the Alpine Stars Vector Pro, and those O'Neill Superfly knee pads are all level one. 
So that means that the knee pads will transmit less than 24 kilonewtons of force through the knee pad. So I'm assuming that that is on the most padded part, not around the sides. Now, the only diff one here is those O'Neill Redeemers. So they get a level two certification, which means that they transmit less than 12 kilonewtons of force through the knee on impact. So half as much force, is that twice as protective? We'll have to find out. So yeah, there you go, a little bit of knee pad geekery for your afternoon. To add to our helmet group test, we've got the IXS Trigger AM. So this is a hundred pound helmet. There's no MIPS liner, it's just your EPS foam, the outer layer and then the inner um, liner inside. But it does look pretty well ventilated and there's some other features that you might not find on helmets of this price. So the visor can be moved into three positions and actually they're pretty sturdy clicks which means you're not going to be able to get a wonky visor at all. It's going to be in one place or the other allowing your goggles to sit underneath. There's also a little ridge at the back for the back of that goggle strap to sit into. And of course, it gets an adjustable cradle, which is adjustable for size and for height inside. Interestingly, in comfort terms, IXS have opted to put a little cover on the bottom of the chin piece. So that actually does come off if you don't get on with it, but it's supposed to be a bit softer against the chin. And also there is some foam to add grip and probably comfort onto the inside of the back of the head. It also gets, like we saw in the O'Neill helmets and like we see on the Fox Pro frame, a Fidlock magnetic buckle. So that just magnets into place. This helmet comes in two sizes and this small is a 54 to 58 centimeter helmet. So it's on the large side for a small and then the other one is 58 and bigger. So for 100 pounds, that is the IXS Trigger AM. Your bonus kit for this week, again, it's women's kit, but you can also get this stuff in the men's is kit from O'Neill. Now, I haven't worn any O'Neill riding kit before, but I'm kind of liking the look of these. These are sole shorts. They're sort of all mountain style. They've got side adjusters, a zip and sturdy popper fastening, and they feel pretty stretchy too. So they look like they could be good summer shorts. There's two zip pockets and a nice high waistband at the back. They come in men's as well, and for the O'Neill sole shorts, which we have here, £90 for the women's version. To go with it, there's a rather plain looking blue short sleeve jersey. It does have some interesting ventilation at the back and a little zip pocket for your, for your car key or your credit card or for whatever you're putting in there. Um, that's £45, that's a sole jersey, and there's also a men's version. So that's it for five cool things. Those knee pads are gonna join our knee pad test. The helmet is gonna join the host of other helmets that we've got on test, and also our route reviewing the riding kit. So I think for next week, I'm gonna give five cool things a miss. I've also got this Fighter Smithique in on test. And whilst we're supposed to be riding quite gently, I thought it might be a good idea just to do a first look at the bike. So this is a 1500 quid full suspension bike from Vitus. And we've also reviewed a couple of similarly priced bikes lately. So you've got the Marin Rift Zone and also a Giant Trance are just under two grand. So it'd be really interesting to see how this short travel 29er compares. So check back next week for the first look of this bike and then future we will have some more helmets in on test and also adding to our knee pad test in five cool things if you like this video remember to subscribe down below thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next time